content and electromagnetic micropower generator for energy harvesting from grazing. This research has been supervised by Professor Glock, who is also present in this session, and funded by Tonomax, ETS Industrial Researcher in Senior Technology. First of all, let's see how much power do we expect from grazing. As you know, every grazing cycle will have two phases. Inhalation phase and expiration phase. Breathing in or breathing out. Uh, it's mostly impossible to obtain energy from inhalation phase because it uh, applies most effort on the user to intake air and it possibly has uh, some adverse physiological effects on the user. So we only consider on the expiration phase of uh, breathing for energy harvesting purposes. In this phase, as you can see here, the breathe pressure is approximately 2% above the atmospheric pressure. Also, for an average person, the air intake rate is about 30, 30 liters per minute. And by multiplying these two values, we can estimate the available power from breathing. It's about one watt. Here are two most recent researches in energy harvesting from breathing. Although energy harvesting has a long history, energy harvesting from breathing is nearly new. On the left, you can see a breathe mask that is presented by Paolo Lamogliano in London in 2012. And composed of many small wind turbines to harvest energy from breathing. It's a conceptual design, there is no technical report on the system. But uh, as you can see here, in this figure, you can see one of the most important advantages of breathing as a human source of power. Breathing is always present, even if you are in sleep. But just don't forget to move a lot in the bed. But in the right, you can see uh, another system presented by Professor Shane Leon in the United States and proposed in 2011. It's composed of a PVDF microbelt placed inside the tubular channel and by applying the airflow in the channel, the microbelt starts vibrating. And as you may know, the PVDF is a kind of hydroelectric material and it produces electrical current when mechanical stress applied. They made the prototype of the system with using the long simulator, and the output of the system is ranging from several hundred nanowatts uh, up to a few microwatts. Now I'm going to give you an insight about the possible applications of energy harvesting from breathing. Unfortunately, most of the energy harvesting devices that uses breathing as a source of power involves wearing a mask. And it's normally inconvenient for the user. But for some professionals, it's already in place. For example, imagine a worker who is working in, uh, in a factory and environment with hazardous materials or poisonous gases. He needs to wear a mask or a respirator. Every respirator has a cartridge to absorb the poisonous gases and it's depleted in time. So, an effective end of service life indicator is required to avert the user uh, the end of service life. Such a system uh, usually uses some kind of sensors, for example, electrochemical sensors or an exothermic sensor or some colorimetric method to determine how much time left to the, uh, until the cartridge is completely depleted and replaced. So, our proposed system can be used to power this end of life service indicator. And also, 
we can use the system for other portable devices, particularly those are used at the region of the head. Among them are digital hearing protection devices for hearing aids. Along this time, we have proposed an electromagnetic energy harvesting mechanism. We can see at the central this slide is composed of a green mass which is connected to the energy harvesting module by a tube. The heart of the system is this energy harvesting module which is composed of two fixed magnets outside the tube, bottom and top, and one free magnet inside the tube. Also, there is a coil bound all around the free magnet outside the tube. The configuration of the magnets are in such a way that similar poles are facing each other. So, each fixed magnet applies a positive force to the free magnet, and the forces are in opposite directions. So, it suspends the free magnet inside the tube. And now, by applying the breathe pressure, the free magnet will start moving up and down. So, the electromagnetic field around the moving magnet changes in time, and it induces the voltage in the coil. By considering the direction of heat as the direction of displacement of the free magnet, we can obtain the mathematical model of the system. At the left, you can see the mechanical part, and at the right, the electrical part. In mechanical part, we have the inertial force, damping force, magnet force, as well as the input force, which comes from the breathe pressure. In the electrical part, we have the induced voltage in the, in the coil, which is equal to n number of coil turns multiplied by the gradient of the magnetic flux multiplied by the velocity of the moving magnet. Last two terms represent the rate of magnetic flux change in time. In order to numerate the sum of governing equations of motion, we have used simulation setup in simulate tool bytes of my class. The input of the system is the breathing force, which comes from the breathing pressure. And we measure this force by using the differential pressure gauge sensor. Here you can see the result. Above the zero axis line, we are in the, um, in the expiration phase. And below the zero axis line, we are, we are in the inflation phase. In addition to the breathing force, we need to calculate the magnetic field around the free magnet. We use console software to calculate the magnetic flux density around the moving magnet. And we calculated the magnetic flux gradient along the coil center line. And finally, the output of the system is the induced voltage on the coil. It depends on several parameters, and one of them is the distance between two fixed magnets. Increasing the distance between two magnets, two fixed magnets, takes the free magnet away from the position of the coil, and it decreases the generator voltage. On the other side, decreasing the distance between fixed magnets uh, increases the applying force and limits the velocity of the moving magnet. Again, the generated voltage decreases. So, it should be an optimum value for the generated voltage. We use this simulation setup to find the optimum value for the distance between two fixed magnets. We consider these parameters on the system and we assume that all parameters are constant except the distance between by plotting the induced voltage versus the distance between magnets, we can find the optimum point, which occurs when the distance is about 40 millimeters. 
then in this point, the generated moment uh, is 20 millivolts. Considering this value, we have made a prototype of the system and we tested in the previous laboratory. And here we can see the results. The bulk looser is the experimental results, and below you can see the simulation results. Uh, it can be observed that there is a good agreement between the simulation and experimental results. But uh, also there are some differences between these two curves in terms of the voltage peak amplitude as well as the time in which the peak happens. We found three reasons for differences. First of all, we measured the pressure at the position of the pressure gate sensor, but we know that there is a pressure gradient in the tube, and the pressure at the position of the three magnet may differ from the pressure at the position of the pressure gate. But we tried to reduce it by making the tube small, but we could never remove uh, this effect. Secondly, we used an approximate value for the damping ratio in the system. And thirdly, and finally, we ignored any dry friction in the system. It was likely that the free magnet touches the tube wall, and uh, um, we, we're going to have a friction in the system. Also, we estimated that the maximum generated power is about 3.1 microwatt. But we can increase this value by using several energy harvesting modules in parallel. Uh, about 700 years ago, that is one of the most famous uranium forests that thanks to God because uh, every inhalation of the breed prolongs life and every expression of the breed gladdens of nature. So for every breathing there are two benefits and for every benefit the gratitude is due. Now we could add another benefit for the breathing and it's producing the electrical power from it particularly by using our proposed electromagnetic energy harvesting mechanism. Also, we could show that the system can be optimized by using the simulation setup that is composed of simulate and console toolbox. And finally, we can increase the output of the system by using several energy harvesting modules in parallel. As a future work, we definitely need to measure and calculate the cost of harvesting, which is defined as the ratio of the metabolic power consumption to the electrical energy generation, because the consumed metabolic power should be low in order for the user not to reject the device for energy harvesting usage. And secondly, we need an appropriate battery or a storage device because the system receives its continuous power from breathing and it has to provide continuous power for electronic components of the circuit. And the battery can make a bridge this gap. And finally, the power management circuit should be designed in order to rectify the AC power to the DC power suitable for storing in the battery, and also it should be capable of adapting its input with, uh, with energy harvesting output, and also adapting its output level. Thanks for the time and your attention. I'm ready to answer your questions.